Good day and welcome to the Q3 FY 2024 earnings conference call for India Bulls Housing. We have with us on the call today Mr. Gagan Banga, Vice Chairman, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Sachin Chaudhary, Chief Operating Officer, and Mr. Ramnath Shanoi, Head, IR and Analytics. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Gagan Banga, MD and CEO. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. A very good day to all of you and welcome to the quarter three FY24 earnings call. Perhaps uh, our last, uh, last call as India Bulls Housing Finance. I'm quite hopeful that by the next quarter, the name of the company would have formally changed to Samman Capital. And here on, you will be getting updates uh, from Samman Capital, hopefully by the end of quarter four. To start off, I am very pleased to inform you that the bidding for a rights issue, uh, which closed yesterday, uh, we were expecting to raise close to about 3,700 crores, and we received over two times of that as bids. Um, we got approximately 7,500 crores uh, adjusted for a partly paid structure, uh, which translates to over a 2x subscription. I thank all of you, especially those amongst you that are shareholders, for your wholehearted support and participation, which made this possible. There have been um, a lot of well-wishers which have stood by us through our ups and downs, shareholders or otherwise, and some of them may be on this call. I would like to thank them personally, whether they are bondholders or just well-wishers. Thank you so much for whatever you've done for us through the last 24 years and especially through the last five years. With this fundraise, we should get back on a positive rating trajectory and fully normalize our access to debt as well as rationalize our borrowing costs, which will subsequently also result into a comparative cost income ratio and shall be an outcome of and accelerated growth of our retail AUM. We have been on the path to achieve all of this for quite some time, having built a high quality asset light model, but this sizable equity infusion speeds up this process and will enable us to achieve our goals sooner. When things go wrong, everything, go, uh, everything goes wrong. And when things start falling in place, I, I believe the Almighty gets all the ducks in line. Another good news in the recent couple of weeks is that the Honorable Delhi High Court dismissed the PIL, which was lodged against us in 2019 by Mr. Prashant Bhushan. He was motivated by blackmailers, whose case had already been dismissed by the courts. But given his background and credibility, the PIL at that point in time created massive market cap destruction, value destruction, and those pained were minority shareholders. Through the course of the last five years, specifically four years since this PIL, I have at several times said very loudly that most of the allegations or every allegation is completely wrong and misinterpreted. Finally, after five long years, the summary dispersal by the Honorable Delhi High Court, the following observations should lay to rest any lingering concerns in the minds of our stakeholders. This court is of the opinion that the allegations leveled by the petitioner are not substantiated as these are not supported by any evidence. Finding no merit in the present petition, it is accordingly dismissed. 
in the considered opinion of this court due to articles published in magazines and newspapers. The tweets made by member of the petitioner firm or a member of parliament, the shareholders of accused companies were jolted and they were made to suffer huge losses. As management, I apologize to shareholders to have put them in this place, but there is nothing that we could have really done when there is malafide in people's intentions in attacking us. We do make mistakes when we conduct our business, but governance is supremely important to us. And this was a case which was just done to create massive shareholder value destruction. Businesses world over, in their regular conduct of business, especially in the lending business, tend to face multiple litigations. As we wind down our wholesale book, we will face litigations as a counterblast to our recovery efforts. I cannot do nothing about that aside of the fact that I am, along with my team, performing a fiduciary to recover as much money as possible for the company. If there is a counterblast, we will take it on our chin, and we will continue to fight on merit. And you will, from time to time, hear of such a counterblast. If by repaying close to a lakh and 20,000 crores, if by coming through this PIL, there is little credibility that the company's management has built, please trust us. These counterblasts are merely a planned effort to enable or disable the company from recovering its dues. As stakeholders of the company, we should all stand together and ensure that if there is a defaulter, the defaulter is what to book. Against the industry average of being able to recover 30 to 40 percent from assets sold to ARCs, your company in the last three years has recovered over 76 percent of what it has sold to ARCs. I most humbly request you to hold my hand while we, with all of our energy and effort, go behind trying to recover maximum and trying to grow the franchise value of this business through accelerated disbursements on the retail side. Moving on to the quarter's results, please refer to slide three of our earnings update. Our balance sheet has stabilized at 73,500 crores. The net interest income has come in at 900 crores for quarter three fiscal 24. For the nine months, we have made over 2,300 crores. The profit after tax for the quarter is 303 crores versus 291 crores same quarter last year. For the nine months, we made 897 crores versus 867 crores for nine months of last financial year. The net interest margin is stable at 4.9%. ROA has marginally grown to 1.6% from 1.5%. Spreads are stable at 320 basis points. Gross NPAs have materially declined year on year, and the net debt to equity is extremely low at 1.5 times. Retail disbursals under our asset light model have now grown to 7,200 crores in nine months. Cumulatively, the company has disbursed over 18,000 crores under the asset light model in the last two years. Since September 2018, the company has repaid debt of a lakh 66,750 crores on gross basis, 85,000 crores on net basis, a lakh 20,000 crores, almost a lakh 21,000 crores including interest. When this entire crisis started, our full loan book was a lakh and 14,000 crores. And there was skepticism around that. All of these litigations and allegations and whatnot. 
from that book of a lakh 14,000 crores on a net basis, your company has repaid a lakh 21,000 crores. What more validation can we provide to you? In doing this, the company has had to run down its AUM by over half. To this equity raise, I am now confident that we will capture back the half that we've lost and grow much beyond. By fiscal 27, we should be back to being a 15% ROE company or higher. And the challenge that the management has taken is can we pull the fiscal 27 target forward to fiscal 26 and push up our ROE to 15% over the course of the next two years itself? If I can now request you all to turn to slide six, which is our ALM summary. Several of our lenders would have logged in and this is uh, crucial for them. At the end of December 23, we had rupees 7,000 crores as cash. The ALM, which has been shown on a cumulative basis up to each bucket, has a positive net cash of approximately 10,000 crores at the end of the first year. The detailed 10-year quarterly ALM is there on slide 16 to 20 of the earnings update. As per the RBI's master directions for HFCs, we have to maintain a LCR, a liquidity coverage ratio of 70%. We are comfortably placed against that. Further, we have liquidated voluntarily, uh, created the FD of 942 crores, which was created for the put option of our FCCB in March 24. The funds are already moving. And on or before 4th of March 2024, all of our FCCB holders who exercise the put option, the date of which uh, the put option exercise ends tomorrow, all of those guys will get their monies on or before 4th of March. To give additional comfort to the bondholders, the FCCB holders, which have a put option in September 24. We have started the process as we always do or have been typically doing for the last three years. We've created a fixed deposit of nearly 300 crores, which is equivalent to about 25% of the FCCV. And assuming that this also gets put, this will be very systematically funded as we have funded over $3.2 billion of overseas borrowings that we have done in the last five years and repaid them. Our long-term credit rating has been reaffirmed by the top rating agencies of the country, Trisil and ICRA, at AA stable as of November and December end. The asset quality has been stable. While we continue with our efforts of trying to recover and in our earnings update, we have demonstrated that we carry imputed provisions of approximately 7,000 crores, which is 13.4% of the loan book and covers our gross NPS approximately four times. We still need to do that recovery, and management will make all efforts to make sure that that recovery happens. That was the update for the quarter. When the monies came in, or the bids came in yesterday, I shared a message with a lot of our stakeholders saying, this is a very emotional moment for me. The last five years personally have been tough for both me as well as my team. And I can't thank you guys enough for having stood by us, for logging in into these calls, listening to the story of a management it should always come and say, we are degrowing for A, B, C, D reason. It is my strong assurance to you, pretty much as strong as an assurance I gave to my debt holders over the course of the last 20 quarters, that your monies are safe, 
on a similar note i give all my equity holders assurance that the story has turned the page has turned the light at the end of the tunnel is very bright if you are not already out of the tunnel and growth has shall resume last time around this management created a 20 plus percent annualized compounding story for 42 quarters with all the experience and the mistakes and thereby the learning of the mistakes that we committed i can assure you we are now set for a compounding of 15 to 16% annualized for the rest of my working life thank you so much for your support and i am happy to take questions now thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles the first question is from the line of craig elliot from nwi management please go ahead a uh, congratulations gagan on the great business results and the success of the uh, rights issue i wanted to express a few things on nwi's behalf we've been involved in virtually every external bond issuance and as you said the wide path for the last several years for the business has been a little up and down but we really appreciate that you've established your credibility you always say what you're going to do and you deliver what you're going to say and that's been impeccable the business number 2 you marked you know embarked on a monumental transformation to that asset light model in a market which currently still is super focused on balance sheet growth and i think they still really haven't appreciated that but we're looking forward to the market continuing to appreciate that more and more and we appreciate that you don't flinch in your um transformation and your commitment to that and then lastly we really enjoy the transparency and professionalism we wish you um and our uh, other stakeholders the very best of all success thank you very much sir. thank you so much craig uh, between hari and you you guys have been like pillars for us both uh, professionally and personally as in to to get hari's uh, sound counsel when one is uh, wondering what what we're doing in business has been uh, quite remarkable i am uh, really glad that we are in this position today that we are able to return your monies with uh, all that we contracted for and i really do hope that in one capacity or the other as a bond holder or whatever capacity it's possible we continue with our association with nwi i really really do appreciate uh, the entire team support there and uh, my team and i are very grateful for whatever help you've extended to us over the years thank you the next question is from the line of bajrang bafna from sunidhi securities please go ahead uh congratulations for uh, good set of numbers uh, uh pradanji i just uh, you know the entire speech you know that you have given uh, is really emotional and being the uh, you know in this community and tracking the banking sector for 20 years uh, and then the kind of journey that you have gone through uh, and your entire team uh, you know it it is sort of inspiration for all of us to you know learn from these hard times and and really appreciate the way you know you have uh, you know tried to assure all your uh, you know not only debt holders but the equity holders is unbelievable so uh, just to put questions uh, forward uh, my first question pertains to if you could just glance us through uh, you know the, the we have already uh, provided some more 800 crores uh, for the aif thing and uh, the net worth uh, you know that we have uh, shown during this quarter just to glance us the the uh, the compilation from last quarter to this quarter uh, you know how it has uh, you know come to almost a similar number and just one more accounting clarification that the uh, 
the shops that has been issued to uh, you know which has been uh, wasted and uh, and the share capital has gone up uh, so just the accounting uh, principle that we are following uh, you know in the books how that has been accounted for would be really appreciated yeah thank you uh, for your very kind words and uh, i'm sorry if the speech was too emotional or something but uh, yeah the last 2 3 days or the last week has been kind of an emotional joy right thankfully it uh, has uh, landed up creating value for uh, most of us and has uh, been an assurance for the team so uh, thanks from my team and uh, uh, and on their behalf uh, to all the stakeholders the um, accounting that we did for the ais and i'll just request ramnath to come in and clarify on the numbers i don't have the numbers top of my head i just give you the principles uh very regularly as a uh, housing finance company we make annually uh reserves create reserves which are called additional section 29c reserves which we are allowed to dip in from uh, time to time uh, depending on extraneous situations which are not in the normal course of business um it's a enabling provision given by the regulator we have uh, dipped into this three or four times in the past uh, the first time i remember was uh, after the global credit crisis and there on um, so this was a unique sort of a situation so we have dipped into it in the ball park of just under 700 crores uh, the exact working of the net worth as well as uh, how it has played out i believe our uh profits for the last 9 months would be in the handle of 8 900 crores and therefore year on year it would show a growth of a couple of 100 crores since we dipped in to the tune of about 700 crores that's the uh, uh top of head kind of numbers ramnath if you can jump, just jump in and sure yeah the yeah. Yeah. yeah so so uh, so we had For, for the quarter profits of uh, uh, as you all can see about 303 crores uh, so net of tax uh, we have dipped into uh, the additional section 29c uh, reserves as gagan mentioned of about 600 odd crores uh, there has been addition to the securities premium account both on account of uh, 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 esops uh, and other items and oci Uh, all of these put together added another 175 crores so the net effect of all of this was a reduction of about 200 crores so so broadly hence the net worth has remained pretty much stable except for this 200 crores difference and the, he also inquired about uh, the esop accounting and how we go about doing that yeah so on a uh, uh, can you uh, on what uh, aspect of the isa uh, accounting uh, uh, is your question about sir is, is it on how it uh, goes into the profits or yes both profits as well as balance sheet you know you have already indicated that uh, 175 crore odd has been added to securities premium account and since it is a double entry where is the second entry that you are putting it <laughs> no no so these are new shares that get created and hence they they add to the net worth when they issue no that i got it but sir since we follow the double account the double entry method on the, on the other side it comes in as cash right on the asset side it comes in as cash and it adds to the net worth on the liability side okay so this amount has been received in cash from the uh, shop holders that is what you are trying to say yeah, yeah, it has to be received in cash yes it has to be received in cash no how the shares have to be before the okay. shares are uh, okay okay because some amount has already passed through you know pnl also in couple of cases so that is why i just wanted to no 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 that is of accounting through the pnl is a completely different concept but if someone is exercising investing his stock and is receiving stock they have to obviously pay cash there is nothing else the esop okay. accounting is on the basis of the option valuation which is getting created uh, because the employee has that option and the price moves up and up up and down and therefore the option valuation goes up and down and therefore it under indias has to get uh, accounted for in the pnl that has nothing to do with the cash flow of it if anyone is getting one share he has to pay for that one share he or she has to pay for that one share got it got it got it sir thank you thank you very much and all the very best 
you know, that we come back on the growth trajectory from uh, probably from FI25 onwards and, and all the good wishes to all of you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pradyumna from Flute Aura. Please go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for taking my question. Uh, Gavanji and team, many congratulations on the rights issue and the, and the success. Uh, I just have a couple of questions that pertain to, uh, and just touching upon uh, um, the previous participant's question and one more. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we've, we've, we've come a long way from the last five years, like you mentioned uh, in your opening remarks. Uh, Gavanji, I just had one question regarding the net worth. So, um, you know, obviously our net worth and, as you mentioned, our CRA requirements, etc., are already quite... Uh, on the higher side, if you could just shed a little bit more light in terms of, uh, you know, the rationale and the and the usage for the funds from the rights issue, uh, because obviously that's going to further pad up the net worth. But uh, you know, if you could just shed some more light in terms of, uh, you know, the timing and the requirement right now would be very very useful. Yeah, that's a great question, and um, I should have actually addressed it in my in my comments. So, if we have to really restart the growth trajectory. Uh, I am firmly convinced of the fact that on a long-term durable basis, we have to leverage on our distribution, on our credit appraisal capabilities, and we have to leverage on our relationship with banks and their ability to hold loans on a long-term basis versus our ability, which is when we are funded wholesale, we can't really hold anything long term. The company came all of this way because, thankfully, amongst the many mistakes that we made, we did not make one mistake, which was borrow short, lend long. So we, our ALM was matched, which it continues to be. If we have to really continue with a robust balance sheet and a quality-focused business, we need to make sure that we have the ammunition of being able to cover the entire play field and not just be restricted uh, to priority sector loans because we are so focused on asset light. Asset light under the co-lending structure is a recent creation and a forbearance of the RBI. And we are grateful that the RBI has done this for us. If you look at the last 15, 20 years of India Bull's existence, always close to about 15 to 20% of our assets used to be assets that we would securitize, originate and securitize. So that's a business that we would like to get back to. And But for doing that, we have to hold on to assets that we create for six to eight months and eventually securitize them, unlike an on-tap arrangement which is there under the co-lending scheme where you can uh, kind of receive the liquidity for the asset in 30 to 45 days itself. So we needed to uh, get capital to be able to break this logjam, start this process where we are holding on to assets originating and holding them on. And subsequently, the cycle will begin where banks are churning these assets for us. And we did not necessarily want to pad up on our leverage at this time. We continue to remain extremely mindful for leverage. In due course, willy-nilly, out of our business model, leverage from 1.5 times will go, grow to 2, 2.25 times, not more than that. But that's a gradual and slow increase that we would like to see versus, a, uh, versus an immediate increase. But to grow our disbursals from... 800-900 crores a month to 2,000 crores a month, we needed this injection. So that's the general utilization of the liquidity that we shall receive. We've tranched it out. This is what the requirement of liquidity will be. And, and therefore, we've not called for the entire sum up front because we will need it in due course. We can't, even if you want, we can't disburse 3,700 crores tomorrow or over the next month or two. So we've tried to be extremely transparent and fair in how we are trying to draw up this liquidity. There would also be other strategic and tactical utilization of this capital, which will facilitate both a cost of fund reduction, 
in due course of time and improving cost income ratio over the next 12 months and acceleration of recoveries through this capital by our ability to provide over the next 12 to 24 months. So all in all, my sense is that whether it is a contribution to earnings compounding or reduction of cost of funds or accelerated recoveries, the benefit of this 3,700 crores, which in the short term will accrue to investors, will be in the quantum of, uh, will be to the quantum of 10,000 crores, which was our market cap when we started with this entire thing. So through this 3,700 crores, the intention of management is by using this money from a liquidity perspective to also achieve certain strategic objectives as well as to use it tactically between the three, create cash of approximately 10,000 crores. And that's what we are out to do. And this is very, very helpful. Thank you for elaborating on that. Thank you. Uh, so just one more small question, just uh, touching upon what my previous participant had mentioned. Um, if, if, I'm, if I'm, and it's more of a clarification actually. Uh, if I remember correctly, in our FY23 annual report, um, we had mentioned somewhere that the investments in the AIF uh, units by our company is somewhere to the tune of three to three and a half thousand crores. My apologies, I don't know. No, remember it was four thousand one, four thousand, a little over four thousand crores, if I'm not mistaken. Standalone okay. was three thousand something crores. Ramnath, can you please take that? You will have the granular data of how it has been processed. It has largely been run down, so that is one thing. There will be a some impact on capital adequacy in due course, which we have more than compensated through this capital raise. And we have created provisions that Ramnath can perhaps run you through the exact drill down of what's happened there. Yeah, so so that has been unwound. Uh, we had AF investments in some of these structures where we had uh, uh, moved our uh, uh, a few of our developer loan exposures. Uh, and hence, pursuant to this uh, circular, uh, you know, we had to make the provisions uh, that we have. And uh, sir, uh, so are we looking to, will we be providing for the balance 3,000 crore minus? No, no, we have taken care of that. So whatever compliance we needed to do from a provision perspective of the December 18 circular, that's been completely done. Okay, so no residual impact we are expecting as of now in quarter. So from the December 18 circular, no. Understood, sir. Understood. Got it. Thank you so much, sir. Very, very useful, and all Thank the best you. to you and the team. Thank you so much. I'll just take one more question, and uh, and then we'll. Uh, you can obviously all uh, ask us anything one on one. I'll just take one more question on this platform. Sure, sir. We have the next question from the line of Rishikesh from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is. Um, uh, if I see the other income in this quarter has gone up uh, from 15 crores to 60 crores, so just wanted to know whether there is any one-off and if you could share the nature of the same, is it sustainable or not? <clears throat> it's not a very large sum of money. Uh, uh, yeah, so you, yeah, this this has jump in and clarify this 45 crores, please. Yeah, so this has mostly come from an income tax refund that was due, which uh, which has now been received, and, uh, and uh, uh, interest and interest on the refund. Okay. okay. Um, secondly, most of the provisions this quarter were, I believe, taken for AIF. Other than which, <clears throat> provisions were not much. So, how should we see, uh, you know, the net provisions going ahead in Q4 and for the next two years, FI25 and FI26? Yeah, so provisions will be a matter of uh, uh, will be a matter of strategy. We are uh, we are discussing that internally to see how do we accelerate the rundown of uh, uh, the wholesale book in an, in a systematic manner. And uh, we have the requisite capital buffers. We have to basically uh, look at you know what is tactically the right thing to do. I don't wish to, at this stage, give a guidance on credit costs because we are in the midst of uh, taking this decision. All I can say is that 
whatever we do over the course of the next uh, 24 months, we should be able to, uh, between recoveries from past write-offs, uh, etc., bring back cash to the tune of seven to 10,000 crores, which is what I mentioned to uh, in the previous question as well. So that's the goal. Uh, we'll just uh, look at provisions and NPAs and write-offs and accelerated recoveries and you know, uh, what kind of litigation costs do we wish to pay and so on and so forth and take a very tactical decision around it. But much as we have been able to recover uh, very successfully, as I mentioned, we, we sold down, uh, of what we sold down to ARCs, we've already recovered uh, over 75%. We will be nimble-footed, stay on our toes, and continue with this process of recovery as incrementally we focus on two things. One is the retail dispersal growth and the franchise creation around that, where clearly the goal is over the next 12 months to double the disbursals. And then also use the wide opportunity which has gotten created uh, for getting back to wholesale lending, but not on our balance sheet, not using our capital, much like we are using our distribution and credit appraisal abilities on retail. We would like to utilize our experience of managing the life cycle of a real estate loan without really putting our capital to risk. Uh, in a very transparent structure in partnership with the Global Fund. I've been talking about this for the last six months, and that should be the other area of focus. On credit costs, perhaps along with our quarter four earnings, we would have internally decided as to what should be the trajectory of that, and we'll certainly uh, guide all stakeholders on that. Okay. Lastly, so the 15% ROE that we expect, uh, is it uh, after factoring write-backs or no? It is after factoring everything. So the net worth, uh, in my sense, uh, in my opinion, between now and then will grow by close to about six to 7,000 crores. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. Got it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Banga? Thank you so much, guys, and uh, thank you so much, everyone. And again, I apologize if my comments were more emotional than uh, extremely database, as they should be uh, in normal course of business. But perhaps some of you may appreciate that after uh, having done these calls for the last 10, 11 years and bored you with the same data, data, data for the last 40, 45 quarters, this may be just an interesting break where uh, I get emotional. Thank you so much for your support, and I look forward to speaking with all of you again uh, along with the annual results. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, members of the management. On behalf of India Bulls Fi Housing Finance Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.